bless the name of the Lord. Today is our activate service. The activate service is our anointing service where we're going to be anointed with oil in the name of the Lord. And we're going to be prayed over. And I believe God that every one of us will receive a touch from the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus. Also this morning, we're going to begin a new series of teaching. And this is an introduction to that teaching. Amen. Every new month is a new teaching. Last month, we had divine encounters as our teaching series. This morning, or this month, we're going to begin a new series of teachings. And we have captioned it, Grace for the Harvest. Grace for the Harvest. Amen. My reading this morning is from the book of John chapter 4. We are going to read from verse 5 to verse 16. John chapter 4 from verse 5 to 16. So please turn your Bibles with me to the book of John. The gospel according to St. John chapter 4 from verse 5 to verse 16. The Bible says, Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest to drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God... And who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? And drank thereof of himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Verse 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I test not, neither come hither to draw. And verse 16, where we are going to stop this beautiful story, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. Go, call thy husband and call hither. I want to preach on a message titled, You Have Been Called. You have been called. You have been called. You see, every one of us in life have one unique purpose. There is one unique purpose that everybody on earth has. And there is one unique purpose that every believer has. While I understand and I agree that God has different areas he wants us to manifest this purpose, but it doesn't change the fact that we have uniformity, we have unity of purpose. And I tell you what, until we begin to walk in line with this purpose, everything we do on earth will be a waste of time. Everything we do on earth will be a waste of time. I don't know if you have watched this TV show before called Amazing Race. Have you watched Amazing Race? Do you know that TV show? It's been a long time I watched it myself. 
But there's this TV show on, on, on I believe, ABC Network that is titled Amazing Race. It's a seasonal, uh, I, I believe it's, it's in seasons. It's been a very long time I watched it myself. But what's the idea of the Amazing Race? They give them a set of tasks and they release them to go and accomplish that task and they meet them at the finishing line. There's about maybe 10 to 12 teams that race against each other to accomplish the assignment, the task. And after they accomplish the first task, they move to the next task, okay? When they complete the second task, there is a clue that tells them where to go for the third task, and then they keep doing many, many tasks like that. And the first person to successfully navigate through those challenges, through those tasks, through that huddle is the winner. And they move on to the next episode. And at the end, I believe the grand prize is about $100,000. Of course, this was when I was watching that. I don't know if the price has increased now. Now, life is like that TV show called Amazing Race. God calls all of us, gives us an assignment, releases us into the earth, and expects us to perform each assignment on time. And at the end of the race, he will evaluate. He would give us our report card to let us know how well we did. Because the winner of the amazing race is not always who comes back first. That TV show tells us that it's not about who finishes first that gets the prize, but who finishes well. Because you can get the, you can finish first, and they go and review the tapes, and they found out that you cheated or you disobeyed an instruction. When you cheat or disobey an instruction, even though you pass that phase, when you come back, you will be penalized for that. So God gives us an assignment with some instructions. And on judgment day, when the rapture happens, we will all get our report cards. It's not how well you think you did but how well God expected you to do on the earth that will determine where you will spend your eternity. This is why this message I'm preaching this month is very important because there is one assignment that God has called every believer to. Every one of us has been called by God, given a mandate, given an assignment, given a responsibility, given a task to go and accomplish on the surface of the earth. If you do every other thing and neglect this one thing, I'm sorry to tell you, on the day of judgment, on the day of rapture, you may not hear a good report. You may not receive a good commendation. God sent us on this earth and he has called us to fulfill an assignment. It's unfortunate many people Leave the earth without fulfilling this assignment. This month is a very sensitive month. In God's calendar, this month is a month of harvest. And I've always told you that one of the strengths of the believer is in knowing the times and seasons according to God's calendar. The Jewish calendar gives you an idea of what God wants his children to expect, to do every now and then, but more so the word of God gives every believer a clearer picture of what God is saying every now and then. The word of God is our GPS to navigate every month so that we can achieve what God has for us every month so that we can arrive at where God has destined us to arrive 
at the end of the month. You know, when a man knowingly and willfully ignores the GPS, where he will find himself may not be where he planned to go. Where he finds himself may not be where he wants to be. So it's important to always reference the word of God to know what God is saying so that we can have our expected end. And as we have read this morning, God is saying to us that this month is a month of harvest. From John chapter 4 and verse 35. John chapter 4 and verse 35. The Bible says, Sayest thou not that there are yet four months, then cometh the harvest. There are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. He said, Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Say not, there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. That means every four months, the fifth month is a month of harvest. Every four months. So I can imagine that the disciples of Jesus were talking and having this conversation around February or March. And, Jesus, and they were telling Jesus, hey, we, we, can't go, we can't go and preach now. We can't go and, you know, we can't go and harvest now because, uh, you know, it's not yet four months. It's not yet four months. After four months, then we can go. And Jesus was telling them in this context, don't wait till after four months. Go and harvest. But according to God's calendar, the month of May, beginning from the month of May, which is the fifth month, is the month of harvest. And not every believer knows. So the month of May, they are playing. They are playing away. They are wasting away. The sons of Issachar were a tribe of about 200 men. But they were the leaders. They were in the top echelon of the leadership of Israel because they knew what to do. The, the, the whole 12 tribes of Israel were told there are about 2 million men. That didn't, back in the days, they didn't used to count women, okay? So when the Bible says 2 million, it was 2 million men. When the Bible says 5,000 men, it was not including women and children, okay? Because back in the day, according to the Jewish tradition, they didn't used to count women. So the Bible makes us understand that there were about 2 million men that made up the whole tribe of, uh, of Israel, the 12 tribes. But out of these 12 tribes, there was the tribe of Issachar, which was just 200 men. And those 200 men were always the men found in leadership position. They put those 200 men above the 2 million men. And why? Because the Bible says they understood the times and the seasons. Second Chronicles, First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32. Less than 1%, less than 1% was in leadership, was set above other men just by knowing what season they are in. Aren't you glad that God is telling you and I what season we are in this month? First Chronicles 12, 32, let's read together. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had an understanding of the times or to an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. 200 men, 200 in charge of 2 million men. This is what the word of God does for us. It gives us an edge. It gives us an advantage over those that are around us. Because when you know what to do, you will always be in charge of those who don't know what to do. And can I give you a surprising message? This world is filled with many people who don't know what to do. 
They may look like they know what to do, but they don't. You can see that in the results they command. They may go to school to learn what to do, but they really don't know what to do. That's why when I was in college, I had people that did first year with no major. Their second year, they still didn't have a major. And I'm asking them, you're spending all this money just taking random classes, yet you don't have a major? What's going on? The world is filled with a lot of people who don't know what to do. So when you know what to do, you will be at the command. You will be ahead. You will be on top. You will have an edge over them. This month, God is saying that this is the month of harvest. The month of harvest. And it's the month where God wants to give us grace for the harvest. What do I mean by harvest? I mean the restoration of souls of men to the Lord. I mean the time where we must arise as individuals and the church to reach out to the harvest field, to the people in our communities, and bring them to the Lord. This is the primary calling that we have on the earth. If you sing and you don't bring people to Christ, you have sung in vain. If you are an engineer and you don't win souls to the Lord, your engineering will not count on the day of judgment. If you are a business person, if you are in finance, if you are in government, and you have not brought somebody to Jesus on the last day, you would have wasted your time on earth. This is the primary assignment, and that's why I'm titling this message, You Have Been Called. God has called you and I to a unique assignment for us as believers. Jesus told that woman at the well, go and call your husband. So it's not a function of, I didn't hear when he called me. You are hearing him through me telling you now that you have been called. You have been called. You have been called. God has called you and he's sending you and I on an assignment that we must take very seriously this season. We have been called, number one, to be fishers of men. We have been called to be fishers of men. I love fishing. I'm not very good at it, but my brother Devi here said he's going to teach me. <laughs> I'm not very good at fishing, but I love, I love fishing. In fact, it's one of the things that I, I believe I can do successfully well if I get trained. Because everything about fishing is, is intellectual. The timing, the speed, the strength to reel, the focus you need to have. I mean, I just, I just enjoy it. No wonder Jesus called this world a pool of men. Jesus likened winning people to the Lord or bringing people to Christ to fishing men, fishing them, finding where they are, knowing the time of the day where they are outside, knowing what to use as a bait to get them, knowing how to reel them in on time, knowing how to keep them and preserve them after catching them. This is a clear picture of what God wants us to do. And this is a clear picture of what we have been called to do. Many people are lost in the sea of the world. Many people are lost in addictions. Many people are lost in to uh, 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 torment and pressures of life. Many people are lost in sickness. God is saying, go and fish them out. I have called you to be a fisher of men. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 19. Jesus called the first set of disciples and he told them, he said, follow me for I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of men. You and I have been called to be a fisher of men. Let there be people that can always thank God for you for bringing them to the Lord. 
I was lost. Now I was found. Thank God for God and thank God for this brother. Thank God for this sister. Thank God for these parents. Thank God for my dad, for my mom, for my aunt. Thank God for my Sunday school teacher. Thank God for my pastor. Thank God for my boss at work. I would have been lost, properly lost. You see, when they talk about being lost, I've been lost before. You all know my story? You've all heard my story? I've been lost before. Declared missing. All right? I was a baby. That was the story they told me. I was a baby. And I don't believe my mom was there. My dad took me to church for a service. And the story was that I crawled out of the church. Nobody saw me. This was a full church. I crawled as a baby outside the church, crawled to the back of the church where there was a swamp. And I was drowning in the swamp as a baby. And then there came this man from one of the white garment churches. I don't know what, I believe God sent him there. He was passing by and he had a baby crying out of the swamp. He saw a child crying and the child was drowning. So the story goes to us that he picked up the child and took the child to the police station. That child is the one standing before you preaching today. So I can say, thank God for God and thank God for that man. I would have drowned and died. Can somebody say that truly about you? Say, thank God for this person. I would have been lost in sin. I would have been lost in gambling. I would have been lost in pornography. I would have been lost in cheating. We must arise because we have been called to fish them out. We have been called as fishers of men. And fishing starts with your environment. You can't be here and be fishing there. When you are here, you are fishing here. You can't be in Ohio and fishing in Michigan. You will fish in Ohio. So start with your immediate family, your family members that are yet to be saved. Give them an opportunity to know Jesus. Give them an opportunity to come to Christ. <coughs> Give them an opportunity to come out of the deep, out of the sea where the enemy has kept them. We have been called to be fishers of men. Number two, we have been called to be a light. God has called you to be a light. You have been called to be a light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. You have been called. I have been called to be a light. God has called us to shine in this world of darkness. And the darkness, the Bible says, cannot comprehend. We have been called to be a light. We have been called to light up this world. We have been called to shine in the darkness. We have not been called to blend in. We have been called to stand out. We are not called to be a part of them. We have been called to step out and stand right for God. Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible says, ye are the light of the world. We have been called to be a light. We are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be healed. Verse 15 it says, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick that it may give light unto all that are in the house. He said, in verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Are you seeing what it means to shine there? You must have good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We have been called to be a light. The world needs the light. We need to shine and one of the ways to shine is through our good works. So by the grace of God, this summer, I believe, God, that we're all going to go out as a volunteer in our community. To volunteer and serve. To do good works as light to our communities. So get ready. This summer, we're going to have a lot of programs 
and one of them would be, we are going to go volunteer. Maybe at the food bank, maybe at the um, Salvation Army, wherever the Spirit of the Lord leads us to, we are going to go there and do good works because we have been called to be a light. We have been called. There is the call of God upon our lives to shine for the world to see and for the world to see Jesus. Number three, we have been called as advocates to reconcile men to God. We have been called to be an advocate to reconcile men unto God. There is a calling upon your life, whether you're a pastor or not, whether you're a singer or not. There is a calling to advocate, to reconcile men to God, to stand in the gap and pray men into the kingdom of God, to stand in the gap and intercede in the place of prayers that men be saved. We have been called with the assignment to not watch people around us go to hell, but to stand in the place of prayer and say, Satan, no, you cannot have this one. Can I tell you something? Somebody did that for you and for me. We may never know who the person is, but when we get to heaven, we will know that. Somebody must have prayed for you and I to be saved. That's why we are here today. None of us was saved from our mother's womb. And that's why we must never assume that our children are saved. We must consciously lead them to the Lord. We have been called as an advocate, standing in the place of prayer to see that men are saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have been called to reconcile men to God. The Bible says, And all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Did you see that? So we ourselves, we have been beneficiaries of the reconciliation. Jesus stood in the gap for us. He prayed for us to be reconciled to God. And then when he did that, the Bible says he has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That is, you know, maybe when you get home, don't read this scripture in King James. Read it in maybe NLT. Because I want to explain what that first statement there means. It says, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That means just like God was walking through Christ to bring the world back to himself, we also must walk with God in us, with Christ in us, to bring the world to Christ. Not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. And verse 20, verse 20, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 to 20. Now, okay, let's stop there. Verse, verse, verse 19, we are called as advocates to reconcile men to God. That leads me to number four. We are called to be an ambassador of Christ. Ambassador. Ambassador. Who is an ambassador? An ambassador is one that represents the interest of another. Someone who has been authorized... <laughs> And given the authority to represent another. So the U.S. has ambassadors in countries who communicate the mind of the U.S. government, the intentions of the U.S. government in that nation. Who helps to enforce the policies that the U.S. government has put in place to relate with that nation Ambassadors are fewer than citizens. But to be an ambassador, you must be a citizen. We have been called out of the many citizens to be an ambassador of Christ. 
communicating God's character, communicating God's plans, communicating God's will, communicating God's word to the world around us. That's why every believer can preach. Every believer can preach. You might not have scriptures. Preaching is sharing your experience and your encounter with Christ. Showing people what God has shown you. Teaching other people what you have learned from the Lord. That's what preaching is. So he has given us the word of reconciliation because we are ambassadors of Christ. Verse 20, 2 Corinthians 15, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. He gave us that word as our tool as ambassadors of Christ. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. The word of God is what God gives to us as ambassadors to represent him here on the earth. He said, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. It is settled. Praise God. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of Christ. We carry power. We carry the word of God. We carry the anointing of the spirit. We carry Jesus Christ on our inside. And I pray today in the name of Jesus, as we are anointed, everything that we carry will begin to speak every grace of God upon our lives, we begin to find expression in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You and I have been called, we have been called to be ambassadors. Number five, we have been called as soldiers of Christ. We have been called, we have been drafted into the army of the Lord. We have been called, we have been appointed as soldiers to fight the good fight of faith. We have been called to fight the cause for the gospel. We have been called to wage war against the kingdom of darkness and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of the Lord and to bring it to captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ when it comes to the gospel of Jesus. Second Corinthians was that 10, 3 to 5? We have been called to cast down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of the Lord. Yes. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to pull it out of stronghold. And verse 5 says, casting down imaginations. Thank you. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have been called to fight. We have been called as soldiers of Christ. Paul told his protege, Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 12, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Don't just watch the devil take over your family. Don't watch the devil take over your community. Don't let the devil take over your business. Don't let the devil take over your nation. Fight the good fight. Take, lay hold of eternal life. Take what belongs to you. Take what belongs to you. Don't let the devil have the few days. You are not a civilian in the Lord. You are a soldier of Christ. You have been drafted. You have been enlisted into the army of the Lord through redemption. The fact that you gave your heart to the Lord, the fact that you are now a child of God, you are a militant in the army of the Lord. You are a military personnel in the army of the Lord. That calling is to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life, whereunto thou art also called. Do you see that? We have been called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. We have been called as military men to fight. Finally, number six, we have been called to serve. We have been called to serve. To serve the Lord, to serve one another. 
to bear each other's burden. You know, the Bible says there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. That scripture is a powerful scripture because the world tells us the opposite. The world tells us blood is thicker than water, right? But the Bible says there is a friend. It's not related to you, but it's closer to you than your biological brother. What does that mean? It's talking about fellowship in the house of the Lord. You see, we, we ought to be so tightly knitted in church that they will think we are brothers and sisters. That's the kind of unity God wants us to have. That things that you are ashamed to tell your brother and your sister biologically, you could tell a brother in the church for prayers, for support, for assistance. Thank you. You found that scripture? Thank you. Proverbs 18.24. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. He says, there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. We have been called to serve one another in the place of prayer. To bear each other's burden. I've said it, and I'm going to say it in this church again. In this church, if anyone confides in you, it's not for discussion, it's for intercession. If anybody confides in you about any matter in this church, it's not for a discussion. It's for intercession. What you must do with that information is not to spread it around. It's not to spread it abroad. It's not to use it to act against anyone. It's for you to go in your personal, private place of prayer and say, God, help my brother. Help my sister. Help this family. We have been called to serve one another. We have been called to stand in the gap. You will not always be spiritually strong. That's the truth. We will have moments of weaknesses, moments of vulnerabilities, moments of temptations. But we need to stick closer. We need to come closer in service. And hallelujah, one of the tools that God has for us to serve one another is the anointing. The anointing is used to serve. When God calls, when he called, he anoints with power to serve. So our calling by God or from God has been empowered by the anointing to serve. When Jesus called his disciples in Luke chapter 9 from verse 1. Luke chapter 9, the Bible says he called the 12 and gave them power. Luke chapter 9 verse 1. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. He gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. He gave them power. So the anointing oil, please, let's keep on going. Just do two more verses. Verse 2 and verse 3 of Luke chapter 9. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Ah, and he said to them, take nothing for your journey. Neither staffs nor scrip, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. He called them, he gave them power. And the disciples went and anointed them that were sick in the name of the Lord. And the sickness disappeared. So what he gave them was the anointing oil. The anointing oil is the power he gave them. He anointed them with power. Just like he himself was anointed. Act chapter 10, verse 38. Act of the apostles, chapter 10, and verse 38. The Bible says... How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who went about doing good. Do you see that? The calling to do good. The calling to serve. The calling to be an ambassador. The calling to be a fisher of men. 
and then healing all them that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Friends, we have been called. And like I said, you can do every other thing on the earth. It will not matter on the day of judgment. The day of judgment when we are all going to stand before the Lord. And he's going to ask us, what did you do with the money I gave you? What did you do with the talents I gave you? What did you do with the ideas I gave you? What did you do with the school, the education I gave you? What did you do with the family I blessed you with? The good friends I put around you. What did you do for my kingdom with these resources? That will be a great question that every one of us will have to account for. Did you take advantage of people instead of leading them to the Lord? Did you take advantage of their ignorance or their wealth for your personal and selfish reason? You know, God sees the heart. God knows the heart of every man. When some people want to pastor a church, I can imagine their motive is so that they can try to sell something to the members so they can have financial gain. But that's not God's desire. That's not what God wants. So we are all going to be accountable that day. And I want to challenge you to use your office, your position, your access, your circle of influence, your social media. Amen? Social media is free. Use that platform to let people know that God loves them and he wants to have a relationship with them. Use everything. I've told you, I think two Sundays ago, I said everything around you must reflect the word. Everything around you must reflect salvation. My hotspot on my phone is, are you born again? Just to start a conversation with people to lead them to the Lord. We have been called. Jesus told that woman at the well, go and call your husband. Go and call. I've called him. Go and bring him. I've called him. Go and bring her. God is saying the same thing to you and me today. God has called certain people in our lives. We need to go and bring them. We need to go and bring them. I was before the Lord this week, and the Lord said I should do something prophetic. You know, in the parable of the talent, the Bible tells us that he gave to one, one talent, to another two, and to another five. And he told them to occupy, to trade with it. And when he came back, he asked them what they did with it. So the Lord asked me to give the flyer of this church to give everybody at least one. To give us one. And to see what we're going to do with it. Amen? So I've told you the test. I've told you the expectation. And I've told you the answer. What are you going to do with the invitation card that I'm about to give to you today? Are you going to throw it away like the man with the one talent did? He went and hid it. And when it was time to give an account, he blamed his master. The one that was given two went and walked with it and brought two, gained two more talents. The one with five walked even harder and he got five additional talents. I'm going to be sharing this flyer to every one of us in this service today. And God wants to see the kind of fruits that you will bring forth from it. Because everyone will receive a reward from what he has labored with what has been given to you. God expects that at least with one flyer, we bring one person to the Lord. We lead one person to Christ. And if you want two, that is two flyers. So this month, you are saying, I am committing myself that this flyer that has been given to me will not end up in the trash, will not end up in my Bible, will not end up on the floor. 
but I'm going to give it to somebody too. And that person I will follow up with until they come to the Lord. This is a test, an open book test that God has given to every one of us this month to commit to bringing one person to the Lord. Lead them in their own language. You know, you don't have to go there as a sober person. For example, if you know somebody who is a, um, who is a scam internet fraudster, just call him and say, you know, I want to talk to you. This thing you are doing is not good. It's not right. I want you to change. I want you to stop doing it. You're already preaching to him. So don't, don't go, you know, don't look for a microphone or a megaphone. You can do that if you are privileged to, but just have a conversation with somebody and say, you know, this uh, habit that you are doing is not right. God doesn't want you to do it. Can you please stop? How can I help you? Can I be your accountability partner? You know, you're already, you're already doing something with your one flyer. And when they need help, you can bring them to the church. When they need community, when they need friends that stick closer than a brother, you can bring them here. You can bring them. So we're going to be sharing that flyer, this flyer, at the end of the service for every one of us. And God is watching to see what we will do with it this month as a test of what he wants to give to every one of us. May we not fail this test in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we close, please don't forget you have been called. You have been called to serve. You have been called to be a light. You have been called to be an ambassador. You have been called to be a fisher of men. You have been called to be an advocate, reconciling men to God. And God has given us his word, and I'm giving us a flyer also to use to bring them to the Lord and to church. You may ask, what is it? What's in it for me? There are several things. There are several things. Number one, there is wisdom for witty inventions in that. I didn't plan to say this because of our time, but I'll say it. There is wisdom, the grace to know what to do out of every situation of life is hidden in doing this. When you do this for the Lord, he blesses you back with wisdom. Proverbs 11 and verse 30. Proverbs 11 and verse 30. The Bible says, he that winneth a soul is wise. Proverbs 11.30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. So wisdom, knowing what to do at all times, is embedded when you do this for the Lord. Number two, there is stardom. Stardom, when you are addicted or when you participate in doing what the Lord asks us to do today. There is stardom. Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3. This is extra sermon. I believe God wants to use that to encourage somebody to see what is in this for me personally. The Bible says, and they that be wise. Remember we said he that winneth a soul is wise. It says then this category of people, they will shine as the brightness of the firmament. My God. They will shine. Their light will shine. Their homes will shine. Their businesses will shine. Their health will shine. And they that turn many to righteousness shall be as stars forever and ever. This is the easiest and the cheapest way to be a kingdom star. Is to use what God has given to us to win many people to himself. Let me give you one more as we close this message. What is it? What's a need for me if I go out and tell people to come to Jesus, to come to church? Your financial blessing is tied to it. There is financial blessings tied to it. There is money tied to it. Why? Because there is a coin in the mouth of every fish 
that you catch for the Lord. There is a coin. Jesus told Peter in Matthew 17, Matthew 17, 24, or thereabout. Matthew 17, verse 24, 24 to 27. Yes. And when they were come to Capernaum, they received tribute money. They that received tribute money came to Peter and said, does not your master pay tribute? Yes, keep on going. He said, yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him saying, go to verse 26. Peter said to him, of strangers, Jesus said to him, then are the children free. And then verse 27, I believe is what I'm looking for. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go down to the sea. Yes, this is what I'm looking for. And cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. There is a coin in the mouth of every fish that you catch for the Lord. There is a financial reward for every soul that you win unto the Lord. I heard the testimony of a man after his pastor has preached just like I preached today. This was a man in, in Nigeria. And the man said to the Lord, Lord, if I win one soul for you today, what would you give me? And the Lord said, name your price. He heard the Lord said to him, name your price. And he said to the Lord, I want one million naira. And the Lord said, okay, that's fine. So he went out to the streets, found somebody, talked to the person. Strangely, somebody from nowhere deposited a million naira into his account. So you know what he did? The next Sunday, he came to the Lord again. I said, Lord, what if I bring two people? <laughs> true life story, true life story. He said, what if I bring two people? And he said, he heard the Lord say again, name your price. And he said, two million. And then he went out that week. He got the two people. And a business he has been doing came through and they paid him two million naira, which is about maybe $3,000 now. No, that's about $6,000. $6,000. He got the, six, the two million naira. And again, he came again the third Sunday. <laughs> he said, Lord, what if I get five people? And then the Lord said, name your price. And he got five million. And then, you know, he just said, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to collect money any game anymore. I was just going to do this for you. I'm going to tie it to other things. He literally got the money that he prayed for. There is a coin in the mouth of every fish that we catch for the Lord. There is a financial reward. So I'm even, I, I'm even encouraging you not to look at the financial reward, but look at the eternal reward. The eternal reward is plenty, but there is also a financial reward according to the word of the Lord. Matthew 17, 27, go to the sea as a fisher of men. Take the first fish, God will give you your reward. Every fish you catch, every soul you win for the Lord, God gives you a reward for every one of them. This is our season of harvest, and we are not going to miss out on it in Jesus' mighty name. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word that you've sent to us today. Thank you for this revelation. Thank you for the instruction and the assignment that you have given to us. We ask and pray that in the name of Jesus, we will be doers of your word. Everything that you have said to us to do, we will do, and even more in the name of Jesus. By your grace, we shall bring in the harvest. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Before we close and partake of the anointing oil, I want to give an opportunity to anyone under the sound of my voice today that wants to say yes to Jesus. Maybe for the first time, or maybe yet another time, you want to say yes to Jesus. You want to give your heart to him. You want to stop sinning. You want to be dedicated to the Lord. Please, if you are in that category this morning, I'd like for you to rise up on your feet if you are here in the sanctuary. 
or if you are online watching me, just bow your heads, close your eyes, and say this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today just the way I am. I am a sinner, and I know that you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins and wash me with your blood and make me your child again. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now I know that I'm saved, I'm born again, I am now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Please keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these ones who have made a commitment to following you and serving you alone all the days of their lives. Lord, I pray that the same grace that gave them this boldness to make this decision, may that same grace be available for them all the days of their lives to stay with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that none of these ones will go back to the world. Sin will not have dominion over any one of us. And on the last day, when you come to take us all home, may our garments be white as snow. May no iniquity be found in us. And may we remain ready and rapturable with you, our Father. Thank you, most high God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm going to pass this to every one of us. I'll give everyone a copy. Amen. Okay. Amen. The parable of the sower. We are putting that into effect today. Every one of us, Jesus wants to see what we are going to do with it. Including myself. Including me. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. For those who just give their hearts to the Lord, congratulations. You are now saved, you are now born again, and you are now a child of God. And I would like to pray with you. If you would like to be discipled, we have an active discipleship curriculum here at Tola. And I would like to take you through it so that you can grow in the Lord and in the word of his grace. The Lord will help us. In Jesus' name. So reach out to us on any of our social media platforms with your name and let us know you made an informed decision to follow Jesus today, the 5th of May, 2024, in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Jesus is changing lives and releasing destinies here. He's saving souls. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, let's partake of the anointing service and we'll be on our way. Let's partake of the anointing. Let's partake of the anointing. Amen. <coughs> By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet said. This is the day of the Lord of rain. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the anointing, by the anointing, Jesus breaks the yoke. By the Holy Ghost and power. By the Holy Ghost and power, just as the prophet foretold. This is the day of the latter rain. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing, Jesus break the... One more time. By the anointing, by the anointing. Jesus breaks the by the Holy Ghost and with power. 
Just as the prophet said, just as the prophet said, this is the day of the latter rain. This is the day. God is moving in his power again. Again. By the anointing Jesus This is the day. This is the day of the latter rain. God is moving in his power again. By the anointing Jesus prays. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's just rise, let's rise upon our feet. Let's rise on our feet as we partake of this anointing oil. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you because you always hear me. Lord, I have done this at your command to anoint your sons and your daughters on this first Sunday of the month. Therefore, I decree in the name of Jesus, by this anointing, every yoke of their life is broken and destroyed. By this anointing, the favor of God encompass them as a shield. By this anointing, they are protected and preserved from all evils. By this anointing, financial fortune in our portion. By this anointing, the Spirit of the Lord comes afresh upon us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Pastor Timmy will help me pass this around. Just put your hand in. Put it upon your head and make any decree as you desire of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Just do that in faith as we receive the power of God as the ones he has called. As the people he has called. The people he predestinated, them he has called, them who he called. He justified, and them who is justified, he glorified. By the predestination, we have been called, we have been anointed. By this anointing, we are justified. By this anointing, we are glorified. Go ahead and make a demand on this oil upon your head. Every good thing the Lord has planted in my life begins to find expression. The grace of God upon my life begins to find expression in this season. In the precious name of Jesus, the King in me, the Captain in me arises. I am the head and not the tail. My head, God is lifting up in the name of Jesus. Where others are saying there's a casting down, I will say there is a lifting up. Mano sadila bashanda kairi basadi baradia. Ora peko no sofre menish kena tuza labanda. Ika sula ruda mendo no poko tabi alatala. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you praise and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have decreed. As you have decreed and you have received of the Lord, so shall it be for you in Jesus' name. Go in peace. Return with testimonies. And may the God of this commission, my God, grant you the answers to the desires of your heart. You are blessed and you are healed. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. amen and amen. Speak to your week. Make decrees over your week. Make decrees over every day of this week in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and make decrees. What do you want God to do for you this week? Talk to the Lord about it. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. In Jesus' precious name. As you have said before the Lord, so shall it do for you. In Jesus' mighty name.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace and fellowship from 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14. Let's put it on the screen. Three, two, one, go. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with us all. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. Who are you? I am more than a conqueror. One more time. Who are you? I am more than a conqueror. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Have a great day. Have a great week. And be blessed. Have a great month too. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for listening to today's message. We know you have been blessed. So for more of these messages, please visit us on our website at www.thola.org and subscribe to our YouTube channel at THOLA TV. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at THOLA underscore church. God bless you and keep on shining. Changing